Hi, my name is Karen Fabian and I'm the founder of Bare Bones Yoga and I'm here today to do a video talking about creating solid foundation in your yoga poses. And if you're watching this and you're a yoga teacher, this may inspire you in terms of some cues you can bring into your classes. If you're a yoga practitioner, this video will give you some tips that you can bring into your practice to create a steadier foundation. There'll be a little bit of anatomy involved as well, but one of the things I like about uh, looking at this theme is that you can share information, again, from the teaching perspective, that's really fundamental and easily understood that doesn't get into all the complexities from an anatomical perspective. And you know, in my teaching, I love to focus on anatomy, but it needs to be delivered in understandable ways so that we don't overly burden our students with trying to figure out from an intellectual point of view what the heck we're talking about. So talking about foundation and helping people create steadier foundation is a really good um, essential piece of learning to bring into uh, your classes. Now, the other thing I just want to add is that even if you're in a pose that emphasizes length or stretch, we still want to have a steady foundation because we don't want to be kind of sitting in our joints or so, let's say in a particular pose, have the feet so wide apart that we're just collapsing. We still want to have steady foundation. So it really applies in a whole bunch of different situations. So to go over the themes for this, I'm going to actually refer to my book called Structure and Spirit. And we're going to take a look at one of the first chapters, which is on foundation itself. So the first theme that we're going to be talking about is this idea that wider is steadier and narrower is not. So let's look at that as it relates to something like Warrior One. So if I come into a Warrior One position, I want to have my feet um, uh, at the ground, obviously, and typically how we teach is to bring the front heel in line with the back heel or to the instep of the back heel, something that's pretty narrow. And you can see, you know, as I try to steady myself, it's harder because there's not a lot of width. So if I ask my students to move the front foot over to the side a little bit, that creates more width and more steadiness. So more steadiness will just automatically come with greater width. And so if we look at it anatomically, the width of the feet mimicking the width of the pelvis is where that steadiness comes from. And certainly some poses will have us bring our feet together. So in that case, we're dealing with narrower at the base versus the middle of the body. But why not look for times, look for opportunities to get people a little more steady in poses rather than overly challenge them from a balancing point of view. So wider is steadier, narrower is not. It might be something that you offer your students if you're teaching a class of beginners or if you're teaching class and you look out and you see people are just kind of struggling, just ask them to bring their feet a little bit wider. And that applies to a bunch of poses, not just warrior one. The next thing to, um, to think about when it comes to foundation is this idea of create foundation. Let me just make sure I'm not... Yeah, I'm looking at my own writing here. Create foundation before you create rotation. Okay, so if we're talking about rotation, we're talking about twisting poses, right? So moving through, you know, this thoracic spinal area, but really in, in all parts of the spine. So cervical, uh, thoracic, and lumbar. But in particular, moving through this middle part of the body where the rib cage is, where things are already pretty stiff because there's just a lot of bony structure there. In order to get some good rotation through this part of the body, we really want to have a steady base. So here, if I have, again, width between my feet, I can really rotate without creating the challenge because I have a narrow base, I'm not balanced. The other thing to think about is in twisting poses where I might have my arms extended, so let's say if I took this posture to the next level, if I don't have steady foundation on this side of the body through this arm, I'm going to start leveraging my arm and my shoulder here to create the rotation. If I take the block and I put it on the inside, now I create really steady foundation and I can start to rotate off that foundation 
in a much better way from just a safety perspective, right? So here, I'm over leveraging the shoulder and some of the muscles there. Here, no issue with the shoulder. The foundation helps me create the rotation, the twist. And so when we think about practicing for the long term in a way that's um, healthy for the long term of the body, uh, long term health of the body, you know, just in that one pose, thinking about the muscles of the rotator cuff, as I leverage that shoulder, I may overly lengthen um, some of the muscles of the rotator cuff. And why would I want to do that? So better to set a solid foundation at the ground and use that as your leverage rather than the joint. So the next thing is, don't be a blockhead, use a block. And this really comes up when you look at um, different poses where, you know, it would be helpful to have a little help at the ground just to create steadiness. So again, I'm going to go back to that pose I just did, right, versus having the hand on the outside or using fingertips, something like half moon, where you could do it without a block, but why not create more steadiness by using a block? So there's a lot of different opportunities in our practice where using a block is going to give us a chance to create a more solid foundation. And it has nothing to do with your experience level. It has everything to do with just being smart about how you approach your practice. The next thing is creating a height and stability from the floor by having a block as foundation. So this has to do with muscles that are overly shortened and looking for ways to use good foundation to help those muscles lengthen a bit. And so for this, for this part, I'm going to go back to this idea of shoulder muscles that are overly contracted because this is a problem for many of us. We're hunched over our computers all day and these muscles on the inside of the shoulder here, in particular muscle, a muscle called the subscapularis, is usually really tight because we've been hunched all day over the phone and over the computer. If I use the block, I can start to create some length in those muscles because I'm giving myself some height. So here, you can see how I can get some rotation there and some length to open up this front line. If I don't have the block, it's harder for me to get that because I just don't have enough height off the ground. So typically that solid foundation giving me stability and the height off the block is going to allow me to start to open this front line of the body. You know, if you kind of look at it from the perspective of external rotation, opening the front line versus internal rotation, closing that off. And then the last thing is using foundation to support the head in different poses. So here we're talking about typically something like pigeon pose where if I came down to the ground and I just let my head hang, that would overly, potentially, uh, strain my neck. So if I use a block, I can support my head and I can get out of that kind of typical posture that again, we all kind of use all day of just letting my head hang down as I am when I'm looking at my phone. So the weight of the head is about 10 to 12 pounds. We're just thinking about trying to create a little more uh, steadiness of the head over the body and a block is a great way to lift the head up and give yourself some of that support. As many times in our practice, if we can align the head over the body, even in different poses where our relationship to gravity is different. So something like this is one, but what if I'm tipped to the side? That's another one rather than this. And then again in that pose there, as I'm facing the ground, rather than letting the head drop, using the block underneath to lift the head, which again brings it into that more neutral alignment. So all of these tips are around using foundation to create greater steadiness in the poses, and that really helps us experience the poses in an overall more healthy way. And if we're thinking about practicing in a healthy way for the long term, these are all just solid tips that will carry us through for the, the life of our, our yoga practice. So the book, Structure and Spirit, is available on Amazon. You can grab it there. You can read some reviews from some readers who have uh, purchased it in the past. I am going to give the book to one person for free. So if you comment on this video here, I'm going to take the next couple of days and put the, uh, the contacts or that comment in uh, just a kind of a raffle thing and I'll just pick one at random 
and contact you and let you know that you've won the book. So for more information about this, you can go to Amazon. You can also go to my website, barebonesyoga.com, which I'll include the link for here, and um, take a look at the books page, and you'll see this book as well as some other books that I have available. Uh, so take a look, barebonesyoga.com. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. I'd love to help you out with any questions you have about yoga or yoga anatomy, anything along those lines. Thank you so much for watching, and namaste.